Hi guys, welcome to the network trip. Do you have any internal web server, IP camera, or any other resource that you can't access from a remote location? In this video, we are going to talk about port forwarding using Mikrotik Router OS devices. So let's go to the lab. I'm ready with the topology. So we need to discuss a little bit what is the main issue that we face when we are trying to get access to one device that is using a private IP address and that device is behind a NAT or network address translation. So for example, in this topology, I have this web server. As you can see here, we have the border router. This is a Migrotic device that is connected to our internet service provider. The service provider is giving us a public IP address. But the main problem is that this web server here is using a private IP address. So if someone else is trying to get access to that web server from an external network, like from internet, then basically it's not going to be able to do that. Because from the perspective of the internet users, they can see only public IP addresses. That means that we need to perform a special operation in the router to be able to allow those external users to get access to our web server. And that operation is called port forwarding or destination NAT. So before going to the configuration, I will explain the logic that router OS uses to get this done. So I'm going to go with destination NAT. So we have an operation that is called destination NAT. So basically we need to target the public IP address. In this case, our public IP address is 190.10.0.2. Basically, is the IP that is configured on the interface where the ISP is connected to. So the idea here with destination NAT is that we are going to target that public IP address. Let's say 190.10.0.2 in my case, and then the traffic that is going to a specific port is going to be redirected to the private IP address 192.168.10.254. Any internet user is going to send the request to the public IP address to a specific port. When the router receives that request to that port that we have specified, then the router is going to forward that request to our internal server. In this case, this is a web server, but actually it can be any internal device with an IP address, such as cameras, for example, or a file server, any type of network device or endpoint that is using an IP address, and also that has a port listening for a specific service. How can we translate that action into a router OS command? We have two options. The first one using the graphical user interface or Winbox, and the second one is using the command line interface. I will show both of them. To start, I will go to Winbox. So you can see here the Winbox in this moment. So I will type the public IP address and then the username and password. Now I'm in a lab environment. So basically I'm not using any password, but in production networks it's a must to have a very complex password. So I'm going to get connected to that router. Now I am in the router. So you can see here that we have this win box. So now we need to go to IP. So this is the main menu, IP, then firewall. And then once in firewall, we get many tabs here but we need to open the second one, NAT. So you can see that now I have the regular NAT rule. This is for the traffic that is going from my private IP addresses to internet. This is called source NAT because it's only changing the source IP address. But the case for the lab today is talking about traffic that is coming from internet, that is destination NAT, as I have mentioned. So I need to click here on the plus button and then on the chain is where we need to specify that this is going to be a destination NAT rule. So I will click on destination NAT. Then we need to specify all the conditions. So router works in that modality. 
we have a list of conditions and then we apply a specific action to the traffic that is matching those conditions. So the condition is destination not and then we have some additional conditions like the protocol. So this is going to be TCP traffic because we are talking about a web server and also the destination port. So this is the port where the internet users are going to send their request. So in this case, I'm going to say that this is going to be the port 80. Since we are talking about HTTP, if you are talking about SSH, you will going to be using a different port. Basically, you can customize that port. Now I have three conditions, but I need one more. And that is the public IP address. Remember, this rule is going to be applied to all the traffic that is going to the public IP address to a specific port. So we need to add that IP as a condition as well. So here in destination address, I will type the public IP address. So in this case, this is 190.10.02. So we have all the conditions on the rule. Then we can go to the second last tab, action. So I click on action and then I need to select the action that is called dst-nat. So you can see that after selecting that option, I got some additional fields here. This is the private IP address. This is the IP on the web server. So I will type 192.168.10.254. And now I need to specify the port that this server has opened for that service. So that is the port 80. Now I will click on apply and I will add a comment. So I will say DST NAT web server, for example. And now I can click in OK. So now we have one destination NAT rule on the router. That means that if I go to my browser in this moment and I try to get into that public IP address, then I will be redirected to that internal web server. Let's see if that's true. So I will type 190.10.0.2 and then enter. And you can see that I'm getting Apache the Ubuntu default page. We don't have anything fancy there yet. What happens if I disable that rule? So for example, if I disable the rule and I go back to my browser, I will go to the incognito mode to clear the cache. And then here I will type the public IP address. So now that request is getting into the router, but the router basically doesn't have any service running on the port TCP 80. The client is not getting access to the web server. So we need this rule enabled to get access to that website. So if I enable this again and I reload the site, then now I have access to that server. This is how we can configure port forwarding in a router OS device using Winbox. What happens if I need to do that using the terminal? So I will go to the Winbox and simply I will remove that rule. And now I will use PuTTY. So remember PuTTY, this is an application for getting access via SSH or Telnet to one device. So I will use SSH and I will type 190.10.0.2. This is going to request me the password for that device. So the username is admin and I don't have any password configured on it. So if I need to add that destination NAT rule, I only need to type the following. This command is in the description of the video. So IP, then firewall, NAT, then I need to say add to the chain destination NAT, and then I need to add the conditions. So we have conditions like destination address. This is going to be the public IP address. So in this case, 190.10.0.2, then the protocol. So the protocol is going to be TCP. Then the destination port, in this case, is the port 80. So we have the set of conditions. Chain destination NAT, the destination address will be 190.10.0.2, the protocol TCP, and the destination port 80. If the router gets traffic matching 
those conditions, then it's going to apply an action. So we say action, and that action is going to be destination not. Then we need to say where the traffic is going to be sent. So in this case will be two address and then the private IP address. That is 192.168.10.254. And then two ports. So in this case, it will be port 80. You can see that the rule is very straightforward here. We have IP firewall NAT. Then we have the set of conditions. And then we have the action. So the action destination NAT, and we need to specify the destination IP and the destination port where that traffic is going to be sent to. So if I press enter and I go back to the browser, so I'm going to type the public IP again, and now I have access to my web server. Remember that this process will be similar to provide access to external user to any resource using a private IP address. This is how we configure that with Migrotic Router OS. The same configuration applies for any model of Migrotic device since they are sharing the same operating system. If you enjoyed or learned something new from the video, please leave a like. If you have any suggestion for future topics, please comment below. I will appreciate that. See you on the next one.